I want to welcome everybody to His Glory Ministry. Uh, as we do with each and every one of our studies, we, we invite the Holy Spirit to come down and be our true teacher and guidance and guide, guider, uh, comforter in the Word of God. Uh, with that said, let's start the Revelation 2. Um, these are the seven letters to the seven churches by Jesus Christ. Uh, Je Jesus wrote seven letters to seven specific churches, and uh, we, we're not quite sure why he picked these particular seven churches, uh, but we know that there's a theme to these seven churches. Sir William Ramsey uh, excavated these churches and found that these were literal churches with these literal problems uh, and blessings that we're, we're, we're going to see. So that's the first application. The second application is uh, the, the, each letter ends with, he who has an ear, let him hear what the Spirit says to the churches. Churches plural. So each church was given a letter. Um, so Ephesus got a letter for Ephesus and also got the six other letters uh, of the other churches. So they knew what they needed to do um, to, 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 to right the ship, if you will. This also applies to us. Christ is saying, he who has an ear, let him hear what the church, what the Spirit, I mean Spirit, the Holy Spirit, is teaching us. And each and every one of us on this broadcast have an ear. So there's an application to each and every one of us. Christ is telling us this is extremely important. Watch and, and emulate what the churches are doing right and repent and, and turn, the, turn the ship in the right direction on those, uh, uh, those things that are not, not doing well. And um, focus on the agape love of the Most High God. So we'll start with the, the church of Ephesus, Revelation 2.1. To the angel of the church of Ephesus write, These things says he who, is, who holds the seven stars in his right hand and who walks in the midst of the seven golden lampstands. The seven stars um, represent, each star represents an angel. So each, each one of the churches had an angel protecting them. Um, we know um, in the book of Daniel that uh, Gabriel told Daniel that uh, Michael, the archangel, had to fight the, the, the prince of Persia and then fight the prince of Greece. So each um, holy angel will have a counterpart, demonic demon or angel, if you will, trying to... Um, uh, pull the church in the wrong direction. Again, Satan doesn't care how he does it as long as he can distract or deceive and take your eye off the most high God and, 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 and change your heart, making sure that you don't love the most high God. Um, so, and there's the seven golden lampstands. The lampstands represent the, 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 the lamp being lit and it represents each lampstand in each church. He says, I know your works, your labor, your patience that you cannot bear who, those who are evil, and you have tested those who say they are apostles and are not, and have found them to be liars. So Ephesus was really, this was the first church, so they took a lot of persecution because of the name of Christ. Um, it wasn't uh, the end thing to do yet. They were outsiders. They were persecuted. As we know, um, the, the, all the, uh, the disciples of Christ, except for John, uh, were, were martyred in the name of Christ. Um, so it didn't go well. I mean, it was, it, it was, it was tough sledding for them. And they, and they persevered. They knew their scripture, the church of Ephesus. And they were able to identify apostles who said they were apostles, but they weren't because they knew the scriptures. That's why they found them to be liars. And that's uh, something that we need to do in this day and age. Uh, as the scripture says, even the elect would be fool if it were possible. Well, how is it not possible? That means we know the word of God. The word of God is truth. We know that if it's not fitting what Christ has written in the 66 books, then our, our, our flag should go up to know that this is not a teaching from the Most High God. The Bible is our truth serum. It is the only way. It is the truth. And God has not changed from Genesis 1 to Revelation 22. The Word of God is our blueprint. And he says, you have... And you have persevered and have patience and have labored for my namesake and not have become worried, have not become worried. So they persevered, they had patience, they labored for the for the name of Christ Jesus, and 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 they they, they did everything they could. And nevertheless, I have this against you that, that you have left your first love. They put doctrine over love. And that's what Christ is saying. You lost the most important thing. My, my book, I Jesus Christ, I, Elohim, has always been and always will be about love. I loved you so much that Jesus Christ died on the cross for our sins. 
Jehovah God loved us so much that he gave his only begotten son so that he could redeem us being a holy God uh, with blood for eternal life. And that is the greatest possible thing you could ever imagine, that our God and our Christ loves us that much. And that's what he's saying. You forgot the most important thing. It's love. Remember when Jesus said the two greatest commandments, love the Lord your God with all your heart, with all your soul, with all your might, and love your neighbor as you love yourself. Christ is saying, love Elohim, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Ghost, with all your soul, all your heart, all your might. And then with that, the Holy Spirit and Christ himself indwells within you, and you become a beacon of light. You become a lampstand, and you radiate light. And those around you, your neighbors, will feel that love too. And that love can only come from the Most High God through the blood of our Messiah, Jesus Christ. Remember, therefore, uh, from where you have fallen and repent and do the first works or else I will come to you quickly and remove your lampstand from its place unless you repent. So he's telling um, where you've fallen, uh, get back and get right back to where you were in the beginning and repent and do the first works. And I will come or, or else I will come and remove your lampstand. So that's a pretty serious offense. Uh, taking the lampstand uh, is something that we do not want to happen. That would represent being eternally uh, a, away from God. And we want to have our lamps uh, lit and ready for his coming. But this you have, that you hate the deeds of the Nicolaitans, which I also hate. That was a sect that was, 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 was preaching some heresy. They would take fundamentally part of the scriptures, but then bring heresy to that. And obviously them being strong in doctrine, um, they, they, they were able to identify that. And as Christ says, he hates those who take the context of the Bible uh, out of context. And he, he says, he who has an ear, let him hear what the Spirit says to the churches. Again, an application to us that the Spirit of God is saying to us, the Holy Spirit, so that we're prepared by watching the church of Ephesus, making sure that we haven't lost our first love. It's a love of Jesus Christ that is the most important thing that compels us to do our work in, in, in the body of Christ, to, to read the Bible, to, to, to pray, to be that beacon without love, there is nothing. It's all about love. And to him who overcomes, I will give to eat from the tree of life, which is in the midst of the paradise of God. He's saying eternal life. I'll give you the tree of life in the paradise of God. This is your reward for, for love. God knows the heart. Do you really love me? And I believe God finds a way each and every day to test us. Test us to a how much do you trust me and how much do you really love me? And it's all about love. Next, and to the angel of the church of Smyrna, uh, these things I say first and last, who was dead and came to life. Smyrna, again, is uh, meaning of the myrrh. Myrrh was an embalming uh, uh, ointment uh, in that day, uh, representing um, someone that was dead, meaning Christ was dead and resurrected. We, we recall that the wise men came with three gifts, and one of them being myrrh. We pick up in uh, the book of Ezekiel, um, that uh, the frankincense, which is, uh, represents Christ as our high priest in our prayers to, the, to, to heaven, and the deity, the gold, uh, as our king. That's in, in, that, in the book of Ezekiel, we see that in the millennial reign of Jesus Christ, two of those elements stay. That is the deity, the gold, and the frankincense. Christ will continue and always be our king of kings and lord of the lords, and he'll always be our high priest. Uh, but there's no need for the myrrh. Because he died once, and then once and for all. He says, I was the first and last who was dead and came to life. He is the only, only person who has ever died and came back to life. And that is our God. That is our Messiah. And this is to show you here in Scripture where Jesus is saying, I am that I am that I am. I am the second of the Godhead. I am the first, the last. I am the Alpha, the Omega. I'm the beginning and the end. I am the Alpha, Tau. I died for you, and I came back to, to life, resurrected on the third day and sat at the right hand of the Father until it's time for the Father to say, go get him. Revelation 2.9. Uh, I know your works, tribulation and poverty, but you are rich, and I know the blasphemy of those who say they are Jews and are not, but are a synagogue of Satan. 
So he, he, they, they were thinking they were poor, but, but Christ is saying you, you, you are rich. Um, you, you, you may not have the material things of richness, but you, you, but you, have, you have the love and you're doing the right things and you're staying strong. And that is more important. You're richer than more than any material things that's out there. And he says, the blasphemy of those who, who say they're Jews are not. This goes back to um, in the days of the, the Herods. Herods were, um, King Herods were um, Edomites. And an Edomite was from the line of Esau. And if you recall in Genesis, Esau, to make his parents mad, married outside of the Israeli tribes and married uh, a, uh, into, the, into the family line of Ishmael. And that became known as the Edomites at the, at the end of the dead, the dead Sea. And the Romans thought the Edomites were Jews. And that's why they put the, the Herod as king. And uh, they weren't Jews. The, the Jews didn't recognize them as Jews. Only the Romans did. So Revelation 2.10. 2, Do not fear any of those which, who are about to suffer. Indeed, the devil is about to throw some of you into prison, that you may be tested, and you'll have tribulation ten days. Be faithful until death, and I will give you the crown of life. So he's telling you to, to, that suffering is coming for his name's sake. Uh, the devil is about to throw some of you into prison. Satan is trying to do everything he can to get you to relent, to, to, to deceive, to distract, to do anything but, but, but loving the Most High God and sharing that love to others. And the 10 days of tribulation, there are actually 10 specific attacks on this particular church that were document, documented in history. And 10 is always a number of commandments or... or, or, or uh, uh, a punishment. Um, this is uh, them overcoming and being faithful to death, and you will get the crown of life. That's one of the five crowns. Again, being faithful until death, you have eternal life with the Most High God. He says, He who has an ear, let him hear what the Spirit says to the churches. Again, plural. He who overcomes shall not be hurt by the second death. Here he's referring again to the second death. As believers in Jesus Christ, we are born twice and die once. Non-believers in Jesus Christ are born once and die twice. And what that means is we are born as believers in Jesus Christ that died for our sins, past, present, and future. We were born a physical birth from our, birth, our earthly mothers. Then we were born again spiritually for our um, belief and our repentance of sins and accepting Jesus Christ as our Lord and Savior. That's the real birth. That's our spiritual birth. That's our soul birth. And we'll have one physical death. That's the death of the flesh. But our soul and spirit will live on in eternity with Christ Jesus. And then once the church is raptured, we will have a resurrected body uh, like Christ has uh, today. Um, for those non-believers in, in, um, that decided not to accept Jesus Christ as their Lord and Savior, they will have one birth, that's a physical birth of the body, and two deaths, the death of the body and the final death, meaning sin. Sin, eternal sin. And that's the white throne judgments where the books are open at the end of the thousand-year reign. And those who are not in the Lamb's Book of Life who decided not to accept Jesus Christ as their Lord and Savior, have the final death, the death of sin, away from the Most High God for eternal life and the lake of fire. And to the angel of the church of Pergamos, write, these things says he who is the sharp two-edged sword. Again, the two-edged sword represents Christ and the word, his word. It, it cuts both ways. Um, and he, he comes back as the, in, in, re, later on in Revelation is the title of the living word. We know in Ephesians 6.10 that Paul references the sword as the offensive weapon, the word of God. That's how we overcome Satan with, 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 with an offensive weapon. It's, it's, it's his word. He says, I know your works, where you dwell, where Satan's throne is, and you have hold, you hold fast to my name and did not deny my... Um, my faith in the days in which Antipas was my faithful martyr who was killed among you where Satan dwelt. So uh, Antipas stayed, um, 
was a martyr, stayed strong. We're in the middle of Satan. There's all these kind of these attacks. He's the, the, he stood strong. He martyred for 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 God's sake, for name of Jesus Christ. That's what he's telling us to do. Stay strong. Pergamus uh, represents um, a mixed marriage. It's when the church was mingled with the world, and then Satan came in and dwelled into the world. And we pick that up when the reference of Balaam next. But I have a few things against you because you have uh, there those who hold the doctrine of Balaam who taught Balak to put a stumbling block before the children of Israel to eat things sacrificed to idols and to commit sexual immorality. Um, so he's re referring to Balaam. And we know in Numbers that um, unique situation where Balak the king was trying to destroy the Israelites and wanted Balaam to uh, seek his God and destroy, curse the Israelites. And God, Jehovah God, told Balaam no, and he heard from God. And we saw a, a, the donkey speak back to Balaam as the angel of the Lord stood in front of him, and Balaam was given the opportunity to see the Most High God. Here's a, here's a reference that we, we, we didn't pick up in Numbers, uh, but we do in the New Testament. Because um, from, from reading Numbers, it, it looks like Balaam um, relent, or he, he followed what Jehovah God wanted him to do, but we can pick it up in Hebrews and hear that Balaam did show Balak how to get the Israelites to stumble. And what he did is he took their beautiful pagan women and told them to take it up to the edge of the camp of the Israelites so that the, the men of Israel would see these beautiful women and they'd intermarry. That's where Pergamus comes from, intermingling and intermarriage. And by, by marrying them, they brought in their pagan gods. And all of a sudden, the next thing you know, the Israel is not worshiping the God of the universe. They're worshiping all these pagan um, uh, traditions uh, because of, um, of, of Balaam. And God is telling us to be careful of that. Uh, this is where um, the, the, the Roman government actually took the, the church and, and, and intermingled it with other uh, religions at the time. Um, and what, what happened was that there was two sects of sun gods. And so the Roman government made Sunday the day of worship to make the two sects of sun gods happy, make the Christians happy, and it also made um, the, the slaves happy because the slaves would have a day off. Sunday was, was considered a, a day to, a day to be, be off. So it was politically correct for that uh, to happen. And um, up until then, the, the Christians worshipped on the Shabbat, which is, a, which is a Saturday. So these traditions were also brought into the church as well. And some of those traditions we have today, and we don't realize where they came from. One being Easter. Easter, um, you ever wondered why we, 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 we celebrate Easter with a bunny rabbit and um, eggs? Uh, bunnies don't have eggs, and, and that has nothing to do with, with Scripture. Bunny um, rabbit represents the god of uh, Asterisk, and that's the, for, the fertility god. And they, they use the bunny or the rabbit because they reproduce quickly. And the eggs represent fertility, being able to reproduce. So we've taken a, a holiday of Easter and brought it from a, a pagan god. Christmas, we've done the same thing. Jesus was not born on December 25th. Uh, that was a pagan holiday introduced because of the winter Celsius, which was roughly December 21st. To make everybody happy, they created Christmas on December 25th uh, to, to, to celebrate all religions at, uh, uh, in the Roman government to make everybody happy. Um, the, the, the tradition of the Yule log. Yule in Chaldean means infant. So what they would do is take the infant and put it into the fireplace, representing the god Moloch. When Moloch was, was an abomination to Jehovah God, where they were sacrificing kids, children, into the god of fire, Moloch. This is exactly what this Chaldean um, Yule means. It means child. And they put it into a fireplace, and they would burn it. And they would replace it the next day with a freshly trimmed, cut tree. That's where we got the, the tradition of the Christmas tree. So we have to be very careful of some of these traditions. They came from pagan gods and pagan worships of, of time in the, in the past. And then he continues, he says, those who also the, hold the doctrine of the Nicolaitans, which I hate. Again, referencing those, um, the, the, those, those, those things that are not true to, to God's scripture. He says, repent or else I'll come to you quickly and will fight against them with the sword of my mouth. Again, Christ comes back with the sword of his mouth. He will speak 
end to an existence, the damnation and the judgment that will be coming in the book of Revelation. And his sword is the word of God, the two-edged sword. He says, he who has an ear, let him hear what the Spirit says to the churches. Again, a application to each and every one of us that have ears. Let us hear what the Spirit is telling us so that we are not committing these same mistakes, that we're aware and we're conscious of this and we're using the Bible to keep us strong and keep us clean. And he says, I will give you a white stone and on that stone a new name written which no one except him who receives it. The white stone represented um, at that time, um, if you were found guilty, you would get a black stone. And a, a white stone meant you were you were um, you, you were you, you were you were purified. You were you, you were con considered um, um, clean, c cleared of all charges. And um, th that's something that w w we will get a new uh, we'll get a new stone and a new name once we go to heaven with eternity with with with, with Christ the Lord. And he says to the angel of the church of Thyatira. Right, these things says the Son of God, who has eyes like the flame of fire and his feet like the fine brass. Again, John is seeing the Son of God, Christ Jesus, as the flames of fire. That's his eyes are of fire. He's coming down as the Goel, the judgment. The judgment is coming once and for all, for all evil, and, and the devil's, devil's due is up, and he comes with a wrath. And the first judgment was the water judgment in, in, in Noah. The second is with fire. And brass, brass is always a sign of judgment and sin. And he's coming with brass. It is an element that can, can stand a, a, a super amount of heat. We see uh, in, the book of number, or in the book of Numbers, uh, the Israelites were uh, sinning against the Lord, and he sent serpents out, which serpents represent the, the evil one. Um, they weren't following instruction, and they were complaining. And he told Moses to put a brass pole up, again, for judgment and sin. And by looking at that, they were healed. And that was a precursor to what Christ would do, dying on the cross for our sins once and for all. And he says, I know your works, uh, love, service, faith, and your patience. And as for your works that are more than the first. Nevertheless, I have, fed, I have a few things against you. Allow the woman Jezebel, who calls herself a prophetess, and to teach and seduce my servants to commit sexual immorality, eat things sacrificed to idols. Thyatira is, is, is also con, um, is, talks about the, 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 the birth of the Roman Catholic Church. Um, Jezebel, as we know, was married to Ahab in the Book of Kings. She was a, a bad Oreo, uh, to say the least. Um, she had uh, many pagan gods, Baal gods and goddesses, and we know Elijah and Mount Carmel came against those Je Jezebel um, false gods and overcame them in the name of the Lord. And what she was teaching, and still to this day, um, and throughout the history of the church, is that they would church they they would teach scripture. Um, but they were not, they were being hypocrites. They would go in and seduce and they would do sexual immorality. Uh, they, would do, they would eat things that were to sacrificed to idols. They didn't walk the walk. They talked the talk, but lived a completely different lifestyle um, behind the curtain, if you will. And I gave her time to repent of her sexual immorality and she didn't repent. Christ, God, are very, very patient with us to repent. As the scripture says, how many times should I forgive my brother? If we repent, the answer is 70 times 7, 490 times. That means God is a very patient God, but even he has a limit that says enough's enough. And in this case, there was no repention at all. Indeed, I will cast her into a sickbed and those who commit adultery with her into the great tribulation unless they repent their deeds saying they're going through the great tribulation if they continue to walk this path. This is not a holy path. I will kill her children with death, and the churches shall know that I am he who searches the minds and the hearts, and I will give to each one of you according to your works. Now to you I say, and to the rest of Thyatira, as many as do not have this doctrine, who have not known the depths of Satan, and they say, I will put on you no other burden." but hold fast what you have till I come. And he who overcomes and keeps my works until the end, to him I will give power over the nations. So he's saying there's a remnant of every church. Even as bad as Thyatira was and is today, there's a remnant that loves the Lord and, and does not 
give in to that hypocrisy, does not give in to sin, does not give in to Satan's deception and distraction, does not say one thing and then go out and do a sinful thing be, behind the scenes. He who overcomes, he will give the power of the nations. He shall rule them with a rod of iron. He shall be dashed to pieces like the potter's vessel and as also have received from my father. Again, Jesus is coming back with a rod of iron. Uh, will break the potter's vessel. He's coming back with judgment once and for all. He is going to judge the world. And for those who accept Jesus Christ as our Lord and Savior, we'll have eternity away from damnation. We'll have eternity away from hurt, pain, suffering, the loss of loved ones, tribulation, trials, attacks for his name's sake. We'll have nothing but love and agape love. And he and I will give him the morning star. And he who has an ear, let him hear what the Spirit says to the churches. Again, Jesus is saying, all of us on this broadcast, he who has an ear, listen to what the Spirit is saying. Overcome. Watch what these churches have done. Emulate what I tell you to do. Repent. Make sure your love for me is true. And that is the first love. It's the only love. Love the Lord your God with all your heart, with all your soul, with all your might. And love your neighbor as you love yourself. Again, letting the love of Christ dwell into you as the lampstand that the rest of the world sees you as a beacon for his glory. And that wraps up the book of Revelation uh, chapter 2. We will finish up next week in Revelation chapter 3, which we'll talk um, uh, to the, the, the next set of churches, and especially we'll spend time in the Church of Philadelphia because Church of Philadelphia is the church we want to emulate in these last days, knowing that the church today is apostate and we need to be aware of what's going on so that we are not fooled, as the Scripture says. And the only way not to be fooled is know the Word of God, seeking His face, praying to him, and having him be our way, the truth, and the life. He is our redeemer. His word is truth. His word is our blueprint for all of our life. Thank you so much. Uh, may the God of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob, the I am that I am, the Alpha and the Omega that we're talking about here in the book of Revelation, the one who's coming back soon, imminent return of the Most High God, through Jesus Christ, our Lord and Savior, that we will spend eternity with him. May God bless you.